Hey, it's Jeremy from OpticHouse.com. In this drawing video, I'm doing something a little different. I'm going to be showing you some of my layouts, and in order to explain what the hell I'm doing with these things, I should probably show you a little bit of my, I show you some of my writing. I don't write conventional comic book scripts. I basically write kind of an, an outline form that's a hybrid of the, the Marvel style, where you have basic description of what happens on a particular page or set of pages with a little bit of dialogue sprinkled in. I, when I first started doing, uh, doing comics, I did write full script, but I have found particular, and I even started Morningstar that way with the first issue. I think the first one or two issues were written with full script, but as I've gotten deeper into the process, I don't feel like I was doing as much visual storytelling. I wanted to have a have the books read in such a manner where you would feel like if you looked at just the pictures with no dialogue, you could fully know what was going on. And if you read the dialogue without any images, you could get another story. And when you combine them both, that they'd make a, a fuller, richer narrative where each complemented the other as opposed to just describing what was in, you know, pictures that just were showing what was in the words or the words just describing what was in the pictures. And that is something I'm still working on improving at in terms of I, I don't I don't think the dialogue just the the scripts the word balloons copy what's in the the visuals but I want to have that thing where I definitely feel like you're getting two parallel narratives that unite on the page and even though I understand that conceptually getting it to work is going to take some practice so we'll see how we go over the next few issues but Basically, I just have like a brief description of, you know, what's on page one, page two, page three. And I tend to try to keep, if I have a particular shot in mind, sometimes I'll go in with these descriptions and break them down on a panel by panel basis. But I try to make sure that whatever I describe in a panel, if I can't describe the action in one sentence with no ands, then there's too much action in there. Because as soon as you put an and in there, you're adding in something that, well, this each and is, a, is a, something that should be broken into another panel. You know, most writers, you know, they, they learn after writing for a while to, to tr well, at least they learn to try to not overwrite a page and put too many things going on in there. Like, really, there should only be one action, plus, you know, all the description you want of, you know, the emotional tone of a scene, colors of skies, the expression of characters, so on and so forth. You can put a you know, a ton of rich information to give an artist, you know, stuff to work with visually. But in terms of what is happening in that scene, you can only show one action at a time in a still image. Uh, I've gone on way too long about talking just about my, my story structure, so let me get into the actual, you know, the actual drawing video. Now, I've been trying, and this was something I did on issue three, where I would try to lay out three or four pages in one page. And, I mean, three or four page, yeah, well, three or four comic book pages, pages, you know, one through four, on one sheet of a layout paper. That way, I could try and view everything as larger chunks and not get caught up in minutiae and details. One of the problems when, you're th when I thumbnail, one of the problems I have is I'll get a little bit too caught up in the drawing and forget about the fact that I'm really just trying to block out the story. I mean, as you can tell, these are pretty rough drawings. Like In some cases, they're almost indecipherable scribbles. And in many of the pages I lay out, I have to put a lot of notes in the margins of these thumbnails just to, to describe what it is that I drew. One of the things you'll also notice is that I am doing thumbnails with a brush, a brush and ink. I do draw quicker with pencil. Or not pencil, but with with, um, with regular ink, like Sharpies or, or ballpoint pens. But I am trying to improve my control with a brush. So I said, well, it, the only way to really control, to improve control of the brush is to work with a brush all the time. Uh, let me jump in here. I probably would go on ad nauseum about drawing with a brush. But I jumped from doing the thumbnails of page one to now, you'll notice I went straight down. I went to page three. And the reason for this is because a lot of times the, the hardest thing to do in any scene, whether it's an entire book, um, a chapter, an issue, or even just on a page, is to stick the landing. Good 
good endings are the hardest thing to have, you know, when you're trying to come up with a beginning, middle, and end. And I look at each page as a little, it's a story segment, but each page unto itself should have a little beginning, middle, and end. So the same way that I started on page one, I started at the bottom and worked my way up. I figured out what I wanted as the end scene of that page first. And then once I kind of had that, that blocked out, I thought, well, how am I going to finish this whole entire segment of story? Because I opened with page one, which to get now into the real minutia of comic book creation, page one is going to be when you open the book, it's going to be the page that's going to be facing the viewer on the right hand side. When you turn that page, page two and three are going to be, you know, page two will be on the left hand, page three will be on the right. So I, and that's going to end this scene of what we're going to be experiencing with these characters before we cut to another location with other characters. So I'm treating pages one through three as one story unit. So for me, the ending of that scene is page three. Once I have, I have an idea of where I'm starting with my opening images and I know what I want to have my ending in my images, then it's a matter of going back and, and working out what's the in-between, filling out the connective tissue. Because if I know, you know, you always need to know where you're going in a story. Doesn't mean you don't have the freedom to make changes. I mean, I'll make a lot of changes when I go to the actual pencils on here. You know, and when I actually go into ink the pages as well, there's lots of things that I'll adapt and, and change as I go. But for giving myself just a basic structure, I like to work out my ending. I, I work out anchor points, parts, shots that I know I want to have. And then kind of work inward to connect them all so that it becomes a cohesive a cohesive whole. That's it for now. Check out my website, OpticHouse.com, for a bunch of comics, artwork, graphic novels, art prints, and sign up for my mailing list. Have a happy new year, and go be creative.